And joining us now is MBER Chair John Lipsky. MBER is the organization officially responsible for declaring a recession here in the U.S. John, thanks for being here. Happy to be here. Thanks. All right. So we're hearing those comments from the IMF just earlier, joined Sarah earlier. You call yourself an inflation optimist. What does that mean with the idea that we're going to have likely a rate hike tomorrow and maybe even another one later this year? Well, inflation, I define inflation optimism in the current context as suggesting that the surge in inflation that we experienced earlier was mostly a reflection of supply constrictions rather than some kind of outsized demand growth. After all, when we take a look at where the economy is today in terms of output and employment relative to where we thought it would be before the, uh, before the uh, pandemic hit, we're about on track. Before the pandemic, there wasn't a sense that the economy was out of balance in an inflationary or recessionary way. So it's not obvious today. In other words, there's good reason to think that inflation is going to keep uh, moderating, continue moderating, right. uh, even without further policy action. All right, that's fair enough. But a lot of people think that maybe the data that we're seeing in the economy, whether it's here in the U.S. or globally, may be lagging the action that's actually happening. Actually, earlier today, I spoke to the incoming co-CEO of Oak Tree, Armin Pinosi, and he believes that later this year we're going to see interest rate sensitive industries and also cyclical industries start to default just under the pressure of this higher cost of capital. Well, for sure. And the Fed policy is uh, restrictive by their own admission and by every reasonable measure. It's not severely restrictive. And this is going to affect principally in uh, the interest sensitive sectors such as housing and construction. But at the same time, household balance sheets are in pretty good shape. Uh, incomes are growing. Uh, the fiscal stance is going to continue to be supportive as there is still spending left that will be felt in the economy from earlier measures. So there are good reasons to think that this economy could avoid a recession. But there are also good reasons to think that growth is going to be slow. And how do you interpret the fact that the yield curve has inverted 100 basis points for the third time? in the last year or so, more than 100 basis points. The fact that leading economic indicators have shown several months that typically correspond and predate a recession. Indicators like that, which, which you know, the historians look, look at and say, that's recession. Well, that's, if, if you remember, typically when the, the yield curve is inverted, it's because the Fed has sought to drive the economy down from a situation in which there was excess demand. As I just suggested, if we look from a pre-pandemic perspective, it's not obvious that the economy is so out of balance. On the other hand, the Fed is has restrictive uh, policies, and that has caused the inversion, as it appears that investors are somewhat more optimistic about the outlook for inflation.